For me, I come back to chub fishing every time, especially on winter rivers. I just love the stillness. I like the quietness. There's not as many people on the banks in the winter. Probably just a few crazy chub fishermen and the odd roach fishermen. And you might encounter the odd pike fishermen. But I think it all stemmed from when I started as a kid. Um, you know, nine or ten years old on my little rivers on the Isle of Man, chasing brown trout and sea trout with worms. And it was tiny gear, it was split shots and hooks, and that was it. That was all I ever used. Might use a float now and again, but it was rare, it would all be touch ledgering. And I come back onto a river now in the winter and even in the summer, you know, it, it's, a, it's a similar technique, but I love the winter. I love the winter fishing for the chub and it's nearly all link ledger fishing for me. My, my buddy will always have a cage feeder on. I'll put a cage feeder on when I feel I need it, but it'll nearly always be a split shot or two and just working a big lump of bread flake or cheese paste around the banks or across the flow. You know, I come back to the local rivers every winter. I don't fish so much in the summer. The summer fishing tended to be when I'd go off on holidays. Uh, I used to go to Tobago every couple of years and I'd fish for bonefish, tarp, and all from the shore. And it was it was wild fishing, brilliant. You're catching, you know, 80 pound tarp from the beach or, or not. Um, bonefish, like, hooking into a dragster that just flies off the flat. But then I come back in the winter to around Oxfordshire, Warwickshire, the Dorset Stour, and I'm chasing chub, and I'm as happy as I could ever be. Happier than I would be stood on a beach fishing for tarpon in Tobago, which seems insane, but that's just what it is for me. It's the, it's the peace and tranquility of being on a riverbank in Britain in the winter. An ideal morning for me fishing for chub would be rocking up at a very small stream or mid-range. The water's moving nicely, it's not pushing too hard. It might have a little green tinge to it and the air is still because I like to be using a one ounce, one and a half ounce tip. I'll throw in a little bit of mashed bread or I'll have blitzed up some bread the night before and I'll just throw in a couple of handfuls. I'll sit and wait a couple of minutes and then I'll lob out a little link ledger with maybe one swan shot on and then I'll adjust it. I'll adjust it down to a triple A or a double B shot to make sure that that bait is moving along the bottom, working in under trees. And I may only give it 10 minutes, maybe five minutes if it's a really small stream and then move to the next slightly swim. I might chuck in a bit of bread before I leave, but it's basically 10 minutes here and there working my way down a series of swims. I have a fishing buddy, we've been fishing for 15 years and neither of us like to sit in a swim for too long. We've said to ourselves, we'll build a swim. We'll, we'll try this technique this time. We're in there 20 minutes and you know, you get an itchy feet and you want to explore more of the river. That's the thing, you want to see what else is down there. You know there's another swim and you've had nothing in this swim for 20 minutes. What if there's nothing here? So you move down to the next swim, you do the same there you might pick up a fish. A lot, of, a lot of the chub I catch will be caught within the first five to 10 minutes of being in the swim. And then it seems your chances seem to drop steadily because I'm not constantly feeding or trying to draw fish up. I'm trying to find the fish, especially in the winter. They're not always moving around very much. Sometimes you've almost got to put a bait across them to, to get them to notice it. There we go. It's moving a bit now.
So here we are with a beautiful winter morning chub. Roads are busy, only half a mile or so from here. And I'm here on a quiet little stream, catching these beauties. Frost, sun rising, perfect. Beautiful. I think uh, when fishing for chub in the winter, for me, I like to use a, a moving bait, hence uh, the link ledger. I think you're almost trying to put the bait in front of the chub as opposed to the chub coming to your bait. I know cheese paste works for me too and I think that probably draws them up a little bit but I'm not sure how far they're going to move with the oils breaking down very slowly in cold water. So I'll tend to nearly always use something that moves, even a, a small cage feeder that can move a little bit as opposed to a fixed, fixed bait locked onto the bottom because I think in the winter that they're not moving that much, I could be wrong but that's what I'm thinking. I've had a manicure. <laughs> so when I put a fresh piece of bread flake on, it has a lot of air in it and it'll just almost drift down on the surface or it'll, it'll move too slowly through the layer of water as it drifts down with the current. So each time I put a fresh bit on, I'll add the split shot back on. And then as that bread becomes waterlogged, with a couple of casts, I'll remove the shot and let it just trundle its way down towards the trees or under the trees. But for the first couple of casts, it'll usually need a bit of extra weight. That's gonna come round, I hope. Some of the rivers I fish, you might only get one or two bites a day. And they're not always huge fish, it might just be a four or five pounder, but when you've worked hard in the cold with numb fingers, and then you've become distracted by something and you've looked back and you've just seen the rod move and maybe you hit it a little bit too quickly because you haven't had a bite for two or three hours, and you make that contact and then it pulls away, it can lead to, I suppose, expletives at times. Oh, there we go. Did I make contact with it? I hope not. Hopefully I didn't make contact with it. It was a really good bite, that jackass. The sun was in my eyes and I thought I saw it move and then thought, no, and then it went, oh, how did I miss that? Because you get so many, so few fish on these rivers, when you miss one like that, it really hurts. Because <laughs> they're not fish a chuck, you know? It's like, oh man, oh, that's so frustrating. If I didn't recast to a missed fish, I would barely fish. <laughs> so I end up recasting to fish, especially if there's been no contact made. If you know, you've struck into fresh air because a fish has either disturbed it or the, maybe the line's caught on the fin and they've moved off and it's pulled, it's pulled up. That's my excuse. So I will always recast. If I've made contact with the fish, I know that that fish is probably spooked and headed off downstream or it's not going to eat again in a, in a hurry. But yeah, a missed fish, I'll always recast. And I think on the rivers I fish, they're not gin clear, they're not crystal clear waters. I think the fish are less spooky. Um, they, they tend to be a little bit cloudier. They have a presence of crayfish in them as well. So yeah, a recast for me every time. And sometimes it'll be a recast and a recast and a recast, depending on how many times I miss said fish. There it is. Yeah, oh! <sighs> Made contact with it that time. Damn. See, I'm missing those, I've missed that fish twice. It's unacceptable. <laughs> so I've just up the size of the hook, seeing they're being a bit finicky. Let myself down, 
Let the boys down, let me family down. <laughs> right. One of the reasons I love chub is that they can be found in relatively small waterways and they can be big fish, you know, for, and, and still uh, a five pound chub for me is an absolute clonker of a fish. It doesn't have to be a seven or eight pounder. Anything really over four and a half to five, great fish, great scrap, and in a tight stream that's only a couple of rod lengths across, maybe even less, when you hit a chub in you know, a couple of feet of water, the battle that ensues with, you know, the trees that are around you and the trees in the water. It's insane and it's a really exciting way of fishing. My favourite, again, would be summer bread, bread on the surface just drifting down a little waterway and you see them come up like torpedoes. They're just a fantastic fish to go for. Versatile as far as the amount of things they could eat. You'll probably catch them on chips. They're, they're a fantastic thing when they're on the feed and they're a, they're a great battler. Let's see what we can get. I'm going to drift line a bit of bread down, I think. Might be a little roach. It's definitely a fish there, though. Still there. Must be a little roach. Chub would have inhaled that by now. Might drop onto a tiny hook if um, it keeps happening. Because I said I have a nice roach along here. And it is a roach. If it is a roach, it's a really nice one. No, it's not a roach, is it? So another nice little chub. I was, uh, when I first hit it, thought it was a roach initially because uh, I was getting lots of little taps and I was about to change the hook size down, but uh, the taps turned into a very, very small pull. So I hit it and this guy showed up. For the first few seconds, he uh, pretended not to be a chub and then he went for the near bank and then the far bank. So yeah, another lovely little chub. If you find yourself getting very tippy tappy bites and bringing you know the bait back and it's been chipped away all the fluffy bread's been taken off it in the winter more often than not you're going to find that that's roach which if that starts happening i start getting little tippy tappy bites that are just unhittable with a size four or six whatever i'm using for chub because i tend to use a bigger hook especially in the winter I'll drop down hook link size, I might go down to a three pound hook link and I'll drop down to, if it's a decent roach, it'll happily get a size eight in there, but I'll go down to a size 10, I'll use a very small bit of bread and I'll flick it back out. And I had a one, it's not massive, but I had a nice one pound seven roach off a very small stream last year whilst chubbing. Uh, sometimes it'll just be that the chub inhales that tiny bit of bread and it's just not been taken the bigger piece of bread too so it can end up being a big chub too that you're then trying to play on a three pound hook link in a tiny stream with loads of trees around you. So it swings and roundabouts but more often than not it's worth just scaling down for the sake of a two minute hook link change you know. And if I'm feeling a little bit lazy or I'm only on a five pound main line anyway with the link ledger sometimes I'll just switch the hook down to a, a size 10 and just squeeze the bread on rather than having a separate hook link tied especially if it's cold in the winter we tend to want to do less with our fingers oh wow <laughs> there it is wasn't a chublet after all, it was a better one. Oh, come here, come here. I'm just gonna throw it again over to that tree. That was so slow. <laughs> I 
didn't make any eye contact with that at all, so that fish should still be knocking around there. I think it was a fish. Gotcha. So this little guy, I think it must have been him. I'd, uh, I'd had a few little knocks, pull round, hit it into fresh air, and then flicked straight back out. I didn't make contact, so it's always worth another bash in the same little swim. And within about 15, 20 seconds, the tip whizzed round, and this fella was there. Another lovely winter chub. So for those that haven't used Link Ledger, um, it's an absolute joy. It's very easy to put a bolt rig on these days and flick out and we get great results on bolt rigs, but I always go back to Link Ledger because it's really active fishing. Your bait's moving, you can be holding the rod or you can have the rod in the, in the rest. Now with the Link Ledger, you've just got your hook link and then up above it, you can use it with a little paternoster where it would just come off and you'll have a split shot pinch there. I like to use a little system where I can slide the distance up to make the hook link a little longer so I might use a couple of gripper stops either side of a swivel which works really well for me it's what I've done for a long time if I'm just using a link ledger without the thought of using a cage feeder I will sometimes just pull a tag of line through a gripper stop and it'll be fixed I can still slide the distance up but there'll be no give through the actual swivel so it'll be the split shot being bumped away from the bottom when the fish moves as opposed to the bait moving through the swivel and the fish pulling it through and that registering on the on the tip it's a really light active way of fishing you don't have anything hanging on your line either so when you hit a fish there's nothing to stop the hook going straight in you haven't got a swim big swim feeder or a big lead getting in the way of that strike one of the things that I like about it, but it might not be what everybody likes, is that your tip is constantly in motion. So what happens is as the split shot moves with the current, you're going to get little taps and the rod tipping and tapping back again. And it can look like bites. Now, when you've done this for a long time, you'll easily spot the bites in, in between that movement. You'll also get the split shot catch on the bottom and the tip will just swing around a little bit and it'll hold there while the split shot's held and then every now and again it'll lift again and it'll start bumping don't strike at those bumps it's just the split shot moving you'll see a bite it's 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 very distinguishable from the from the bumping it'll just get a little bit heavier and pull around a little more but it's it's a great it's a great way of having something happening with the tip when maybe for hours nothing's happening and the other thing with the link ledger is when it does hole up and hold its position, it can be nice just to leave it there for a couple of minutes because it might have just nestled up against a little, you know, trough on the, on the bed of the river or up against a, even a tree branch where there's a, a chub sitting. I'd always leave it there for a couple of minutes and then I'll tweak it again if it hasn't moved of its own accord with the current. I'll either lift the rod and gently just lift it so I can see that it's come away from the bottom or I'll, if the rods are in rest I'll just pull a line again until I can feel that it's dislodged it and you might start to see the tip move around again. Once it settles in round a slack or on the near bank you'll see the tip just gradually come back and soften and you'll leave it there again for a couple of minutes and then recast. I'm celebrating nothing yet. <laughs> Beauty. A nice winter chub came hard this morning. I've missed three or four bites, and this one was a tricky one as well. Slow pull, it just sat, didn't go all the way round, quite finicky, and the other ones have been finicky too, so I dropped down to one split shot and just held. Maybe about five pounds, certainly not far short. Lovely, lovely fish. The nice thing about link ledgering is you don't have to spend the entire day doing it. You can get out for a couple of hours. Today, we came down for a couple of hours, ended up with that lovely five pounder, and we could have had fish earlier if I'd fished better. So get out to your favorite spot today, link ledger, 
not my favourite spots. <laughs>